Hey guys, in today's video, I genuinely want your advice on something. You see, earlier on today, I was that close to getting the Nexus 3000 full setup. I was that close to it. But something held me back, and that something is the Denon SE 6000s. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through all the thoughts in my head from today, and at the end, I actually want you to vote or give me your opinion on what you think I should do. So without wasting any time, let's just get straight into it. So this is the setup I was gonna get. CDJ Nexus 3000, two of them, one for either side, obviously, and the DJM 900XX2 mixer, okay? Now, these are the reasons why I wanted to get these DJ decks, and it also kind of covers the pros of these DJ decks. So let's get into them. Number one, these are club standard DJ decks globally. And I wanted to know that when I walk into a club, wherever I am in the world, I'm gonna be as good as I could possibly be on these DJ decks. That's a massive reason. I wanna have club standard DJ equipment here so I can get absolutely amazing. So when I go into the club, I'm as good as I am practicing at home. That's the main reason, okay? Number two, I've never owned CDJs before in my life and I told myself when I hit 100,000 subscribers, I'd get them from myself as a treat, but just never did. Something held me back. Number three, when uh, these DJ decks came out, they got sent out to a load of DJ YouTubers, but nobody was allowed to actually keep these. Pioneer asked for them all back. So nobody's actually got, very few people have actually got these DJ decks, which is also kind of appealing. Number four, if I buy them and Pioneer don't send them to me, I can do a genuine, honest review. And there's so many things I actually want to review. I want to know what makes these decks like six thousand pounds what is it about them like i want to go through and do an absolute full stringent review on these things and work it out for myself and see for myself without having a company looking over my shoulder going well if you say anything negative we're not going to send you any more gear which is kind of what happens when companies send you gear okay the other thing is, I've always only ever used Serato, so I've been interested in kind of making a bit of a switch, not permanently, but over to Record Box, because I know that's quite a popular, or it's probably, I don't know if it's the most popular, but it's another incredibly popular DJ software. So that was another reason. Um, and number six, these are some of the technically highest end DJ decks on the market. Technically, they just are. Number seven, which I also want to throw in there, which is the reason why I wanted to get the 3000s, is because they are ultimately the most up-to-date model of the Nexus CDJs. I know everybody's really disappointed in the 3000 versus the 2000, but the 2000s are widely respected as some of the best DJ decks on the planet. So if I'm going to get them for the very first time, I might as well get the 3000 over the 2000. So this is something else you have to take into consideration here. I know everyone was disappointed by that step up, but this is my first time buying CDJs. I might as well get the 3000s, right? Okay, so let's get into some of the cons. Con number one is the price. CDJ Nexus 3000, the cheapest I could find the two decks was 4,299 and the DJM Mixer was 1,959. Together that comes to 6,128 pound, which is an eye-watering amount of money to spend on some DJ decks. So that has to come under the cons. Con number two is simply these DJ decks, the Denon SC 6000s and the mix, which is the X1850. And I can get that entire bundle, all of that, for £3,090. That was the cheapest price I found it. So just to flick between the two, 6000 or 3000 they are literally half the price. That's the first thing, right? But then after that, there's loads of actual pros to getting the Denons over the Pioneers. So let's go into those as well. Benefits of the Denons over the Nexus. Number one, a way bigger screen with multi-touch. Multi-touch is exactly what our phones have got, right? Which, which you can pinch and squeeze and pull and touch multiple things at once. It's a glass screen. Whereas with the Nexus, it's actually like a pressure point screen. You can't squeeze, you can't grab. It's not really what we've got used to using with iPads and stuff. It's kind of a bit of an old technology. Yes, it's touch screen, but still it's it's not the same. The other thing is with the Nexus, with the uh, Denons, it's a way bigger screen as well, which everybody has said seems weird at the start, but then when you look back at the Nexus, you're like, whoa, that screen is so small and horrible to look at. So that's the general consensus out there. That's number one, it's a bigger screen. 
Um, now, number I've messed up the numbers, ignore these, okay? Number one was price, number two was way bigger screen, number three was on the Denons, you've got multi-deck options. So you know like if you've got kind of like more kind of standard um, kind of basic DJ decks, you often get like deck one and deck two and you can have multiple songs playing. You have that option with the Denon where you can have one song kind of essentially playing underneath the other song on the one deck. You can't do that on the Nexus, okay? Um, which is kind of like an interesting option that I'd like to kind of have if I wanted to, do, even though I rarely use this, okay? Um, number four, you can process within the deck, so you don't need record box. The Denons, you can process, you can it'll uh, analyze the song for you, you can put cue points in, you can do all this stuff within the actual decks. It means you don't actually need any external software to use these DJ decks. Number five, the Denons, and by the way, just so you know, all these benefits are things that the Denons can do, which the Nexus cannot do, okay? So, number five, built-in Wi-Fi with streaming available. Now, so basically what this means is you've essentially got access to loads of different streaming stuff like Tidal, etc., right there on the DJ decks. Now, at the beginning, I kind of thought about this when I was right on the cusp of getting the Nexus, and I thought, well, who cares? I don't really use that anyway. I always do my stuff on the computer. Like, if I'm putting together a DJ set, I go and listen to music on Spotify, on YouTube and stuff, then I go and download it, then I go through this entire process. So why would I need that? And suddenly I thought to myself, Phil, you're thinking the wrong way here. The fact of the matter is, once you have this, you don't have to go through that arduous process of listening to all these different songs, go in downloading them, getting them onto USB, doing all this stuff, it's right there, which would be utterly revolutionary that I could just essentially put together an entire DJ set by just searching through stuff on my DJ decks. That's freaking massive when I thought about it. Number six, ability to actually build playlists and search within actual decks. In other words, I can kind of like search your songs, create playlists, drag, drop, all this kind of stuff. You can't create playlists on the Nexus 3000. It seems like archaic, like why can't you do that? But you can on the Denons. Number seven, the cue points on the Denons have multiple functionality. So it's not just cue points, you can do roll mode, slice the mode, different performance stuff with them. On the, um, on the Nexus, the cue points are just cue points. They do nothing else but that, which kind of makes me think that the Denons are cool to have. You know I don't use a lot of those features. They're nice to have there when you need them. The other thing is I actually like where they're positioned on the Denon more. They're down at the bottom of the DJ Dex, which is what I'm used to, rather than having them above the jog wheel as well. So I don't particularly like where the cue points are placed on the Nexus either. Number eight, the Denon SE6000M come with a motor Plateau, which is amazing for scratching and stuff like that. Something I'm thinking about getting. I'm thinking about getting one M and one regular. So I've got like one scratching deck if I want it. Again, you don't really have the option with Pioneer. Number nine, with the Denons, you've got these pitch bend buttons. You know at the moment where you have to kind of like touch the side of the deck and spin it forward or back to catch up? Well, the Denons have actual buttons which you press which speed up or slow down the song. Um, which apparently, once you get used to it, and I've had them on some other decks before, it's actually really handy and kind of more intuitive than kind of touching the side of this platter and spinning it. So that's quite interesting as well. Um, number 10, um, I've said here that the Nexus 2000 to 3000 upgrade was a worldwide disappointment um, and does not include any of the additional features I've just mentioned then. And the other thing which I mentioned as well, I've not found the cube points on the Nexus 3000. Now, general cons, okay? So this is just general stuff. This is not even me comparing the two DJ decks. General cons of the Nexus is, um, does club standard actually matter anymore? After the year we've had, does it even matter? Like, no one's even DJing at clubs at the moment. Why would I buy some software, some hardware based on what's club standard when no clubs have been open for the last year? Does that even matter? Number two general cons. Could the club standard actually change over time with many DJs making the swap over to Denon, including these big DJs like Laidback Luke, who are massive ambassadors of Denon? Could the club standard actually change? And number three, you know, I said I wanted to do honest reviews. Would it actually be an honest review if I spent £6,000 of my hard-earned cash on these DJ decks? I'd be in that mode where I'd be convincing myself I made the right idea and I'd be like, yeah, these are really good. Am I going to spend £6,000 on something and then convince myself 
they're not very good. Probably not. Do you see what I mean? There's a weird logic there. Okay, so now let's have a look at some of the benefits of the Nexus over the Denons. So the first point, which is that they're technically a bit more powerful, but by an absolute fraction. I've looked at speed tests and basically you can hardly tell the difference, but that is something to take into consideration. Point number two, something I love, and this is a massive one for me, I love the fact that this Nexus CDJ 3000s have got song align. So your master song, the song that's currently playing, shows on the display screen of the song that you're bringing in. So you can align the two tracks visually. As a Serato user, this seems very intuitive to me. And I really love the idea of being able to see those two tracks lined up on the screen right there. Um, I don't know why the Denons don't have that, but something I'm thinking in my head is I bet you there will be a software update in the next year or so, and they probably will just allow that. It's a simple thing for them to just add in. But at the moment, they don't. So that's the one thing the Nexus definitely have over the Denons. Number three. Um, the Nexus have this really cool thing where you can actually skim forward and cue and listen to the song that's actually playing in those DJ decks. So they both have, the Denons and the Nexus have a way where you can go and obviously cue different songs by touching them and playing through. But one of the things the Nexus have is if the song is currently playing, you can actually scroll forward and listen to what drop and stuff is coming up in that actual song that's playing. I really like that idea. If you were to do it on the Nexus, you've got to load that song into another deck, then go and listen forward to it. However, again, this is a software update that Denon can add really easily and most likely will add. Number four, um, I'm used to Pioneer. Most of the time I'm DJing on Pioneer DJ deck. So this is something I'm used to. And I worry that actually I could end up getting the Denon and Pioneer could just be the club standard and festival standard for the next 20 years. And I'll end up just thinking, I should have just got the Pioneers. They were always going to be the st industry standards, you know, like that was my main draw to these DJ decks is that if I walk into a club, I'm going to be right at home. And it seems like a completely pointless thing for me to go and get the Denons if I'm going to end up walking into a club and go, well, I don't know these DJ decks as well as I could know them. That's a really, really valid point because that was the thing that drew me towards the Nexus in the first place. Number five, the, the mixers for the Nexus, the DJM 900 XS2 are widely considered superior mixers to the X1850. They just are. From all the different reviews I've seen, everybody's just like, these are better, better quality and better sound effects, etc., etc. Um, which isn't a huge one for me, but it's something to consider. And the other thing to bear in mind is if I was going to get the Nexus, I was planning on buying the DJM S11. Now, the whole point of this is if you get that as a mixer, you suddenly have access to all of those features that the, D the Nexus 3000 are missing. Like you've got the different pads, you've got loads of different effects, and suddenly a lot of those additional like performance effects that the Denon have become redundant because I'd have this really fancy mixer would have all of those things anyway so that's another point to bear in mind there so guys and um, that's it i'm sorry i tried to keep this as quick as possible hopefully you guys are still there and this is the point where i'd love you to give me your opinion so what i'm going to do directly below this video is i'm going to create a comment pin it at the top and underneath i'm going to put two sub comments which is the nexus and the denon and if you don't want to leave a comment i want you to just go and like whichever one you think i should get okay or just write just quickly type it out below i'd love to know your opinion and this is something I'd like you to do as well. I'd like you to take money out of the equation. I know I've talked about the money, but the fact of the matter is I'm a professional DJ. I make money from DJing online. And actually I don't mind spending this money on this stuff because I DJ every single day and I consider myself or well, I am a professional DJ. So I don't mind it. So take that out. I just want to be happy with the choice that I make. I don't mind spending that extra three grand if I'm really, really happy with my decision. So I want you to take that out. And the other thing I want you to ask yourself as well is, which would you prefer to see more DJ sets on? Because when I buy one or other of these DJ decks, you're going to ine inevitably see more DJ sets done on whichever DJ decks I buy. So take that into account as well. That's everything. Please give me your opinion below. I've put this entire video together just for your opinion. So I really, really want it. Hope you enjoyed the video um, and go and leave a comment now. And also um, leave, watch this video here if you want to. Ciao.